this is the video for and uh, for exam review two. Um, so this will review some of the question in chapter three point four. If you need to pause the video and write down some of these questions, please feel free to do it. The first one, we will look at this uh, degree three function, and we want to list potential zero. So you know this is degree three, a positive. So hopefully you know the end behavior is like one side up, one side down with a positive. It's going to be right side up, left side down, right? And then degree three mean maximum turn would be two, like that. So if you look at this graph, the domain, the possible x values for this would be negative infinity to positive infinity. So, uh, and I only want to find the actual zero at the end. So actual zero would be x in the sub. So from infinitely many number to narrow down to possibly just three x in the sub, if there's no imaginary number, we need to somehow narrow it down. So to narrow it down, like hopefully you remember, we have this formula called P over Q, right? And I told you try to write them out as words because like people seem to mix the two pretty bad sometimes. So P mean plus minus all the factors of the constant over plus minus factors of leading coefficient. All right, so um, the way I remember it is like it's in alphabetical order, C constant come first, and then L leading coefficient come later. So the constant for this question is five, positive five, and the leading coefficient is seven, Seven go here, and we want to think about what multiply to get. I get five, so I can have one times five. Mm, that's pretty much it. And for seven, I have one times seven. So we list all the uh, factors for them, and then I'm gonna list them out. So on top, I can have plus minus one or five. At the bottom, we have plus minus one or plus minus seven, right? So which means all the number on top need to be divided by plus minus one. So plus minus one plus minus five. And then all the number on top need to be divided by plus minus seven. So we have plus minus one seven and then plus minus five seven. So plus minus one and then like plus five minus five etc. Totally, we are going to have, instead of negative infinitive to positive infinitive, now we narrow it down to 2, 4, 6, 8 possible zeros. So this is a pretty useful step to help you to solve a polynomial function to find all the x in the set, all the zeros. So this is a relatively shorter question. Hopefully you will get those points. And the next one, so again we have a degree 3 polynomial, if they give you one of the zeros, and again, hopefully you know, zero is the same as x-intercept, right? Uh, oops, x-intercept, singular. Uh, for this function, we want to write the function in factor form and list all the zeros. So we know one of the zero, right? One of the zero is x equal to 1. And then if I turn that back to factor, it will move the 1 to the left-hand side, so it's going to be x minus 1 equal to 0, right? So if you don't know how to do anything else, you should at least give me back one zero and one factor, right? That's what we know. Uh, so we need to think, we have a degree 3 here, if I know one of the factor or one of the zero, how can I move it down to become a degree 2 function? Um, and then from degree 2, we can factor or do quadratic formula, right? So the strategy is, hopefully you know, uh, we're going to need to use division to get a degree 3 to a degree 2 and once you have a degree 2 then you can solve it by 
either factoring if it can be factored or quadratic formula if you need to plug it in. Alright, so first we're going to do division. Look like this guy, I can do synthetic division, right? That would make it quicker. But if you want to do long division, it's perfectly fine. Uh, because x already solved for you equal to 1, that's what we are going to put here. Alright, and then we're going to write down the dividend here, which is 3, 2, 1, no x is in descending order. So we can just pick up the coefficient 2, 3, negative 8, and 3. And if you want to pause the video and check it after you're done, you can do that. We bring down 2 times 1 is 2. Combine that, we have 5. 5 times 1 is 5. Combine those two numbers, we got negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. So we got a 0 here. Is it good or bad? It should be good because the remainder is 0. Means that's actually a solution. So they told us it's a solution. So if you do that and that's not a 0, you probably did something wrong. Maybe plug in the wrong number here or you did the step incorrect. So you want to double check. So once we have that, uh, we can write that as a function because the function will equal to quotient times the divisor plus the remainder, which we don't have a remainder. We can ignore that part, which here, my quotient, I started with degree 3 divided by 1x. So it's going to be degree 2 here, 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And my divisor, I know that factor is supposed to be x minus 1, right? All right, so that's the function. Now I need to factor this part. So it looks like I'm going to need to do some AC method probably. Uh, if I factor something times something equal to my a times c, which is 2 times negative 3 equal to negative 6, and f together equal to b, which is 5, right? So number we multiply to 6 would be 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. Uh, both of them give you a 5. Um, okay, um, but this is a negative. They don't have the same sign, so I can not do like if 2 plus 3 is 5, 2 times 3 is not negative 6. So I'm going to try the other one. Um, it will not work with like if I put 2 plus 3 is 5, 2 times 3 doesn't equal to negative 6. So that doesn't work. So I'm going to put in... 6 and 1. So I know 6 subtracting 1 would be 5. 6 times a negative 1 would be negative 6. So those are the two numbers we need. And we're going to go to the middle guy and say plus 6x and then minus this 1x, right? And then bring down the other term to factor. Minus 3, 2x cubed like that. So, pair them up, pull out 2x times, I'm sorry, this is square, uh, x plus 3, right? And then bring down the negative sign, minus, I don't have anything else to pull out except a 1. And then once you pull out the negative, make sure you change the sign inside, right? x plus 3. And then we still have that x plus 1 hanging out and the minus 1. Okay. So now factors are f of x equal to x plus 3 and then 2x minus 1 and then x minus 1. So that would be my degree 3 function in factor form. Don't forget to start with f of x because they ask for functions. And for the zeros, we have x equal to negative 3. This is basically 2x equal to 1. So divided by 2, x equal to 1 half. 
and then this one is equal to 1. So the zeros of um, x equal to negative 3, or you can say negative 3 comma 0, uh, 1 half comma 0, and then 1 comma 0. All right, so we divide and then we factor or use quadratic formula. Thank you.